Hello everyone, welcome to this Informatica support video. I am Anisha Singh, part of the GCS team at Informatica and today we are going to talk about REST APIs and Enterprise Data Catalog or EDC version 10.4.1. Before we proceed any further, let's go over the agenda for this video. So in this video, we are going to go over the EDC REST API overview. Then we are going to go over the basic REST API calls and lastly, we'll see how to get a resource, create a resource, test connection for it, execute or run it, and then monitor the resource using Swagger. As you may know, REST web service provides you a way to interact and perform tasks with web services. A REST web service conforms to the principles of REST by being client-server oriented and it uses HTTP protocol for communication. APIs that conform to the REST principles are known as REST APIs. Now, EDC supports RESTful architecture. Any communication the client does with EDC uses the REST protocol. So we interact with catalog service via REST APIs. Catalog service acts as an API handler and it interprets queries, goes to the back end and gives results in the required format. The catalog admin and the catalog UI are the web clients and the access layer is the less REST layer. So firing access layer REST APIs or directly searching in the catalog UI and performing tasks in the LDM admin are both handled in the same manner. Thus, you can say that the server side or handler logic is the same since all queries are routed through the access layer. So anything in the catalog UI can be done using REST APIs such as extracting metadata information from the catalog, triggering or scheduling jobs, checking status of the job, assigning users permissions and much more. Now you can access REST APIs using two ways. Access Layer 1 has Swagger built on top of LDM Admin or Catalog and it has a list or document of all the exposed REST APIs. To access this layer, you can type in the name of the Catalog Admin followed by the port number, which is generally 9085 and then type in slash access. This automatically redirects you to the Swagger UI. Swagger is a third-party application which can intelligently traverse through all your REST API documentation and it's built on top of the access layer. You can also use access layer 2 which is designed for direct use by the end users. Access layer 1 is not recommended for end users as R&D keeps changing its behavior. To access this layer, you can again type in the name of the catalog admin followed by the port number and then type in slash access slash two followed by slash model or data as these are the exposed concepts. Now let's move on to trying out some basic REST API calls. First, let's try out access layer one or Swagger. I can directly go to access layer one by typing in slash access here. This opens up the Swagger UI at the top. We have the option to select a spec, default or internal. Let's go to object info and get objects that match our query customers. Let's give our search string as customers. This returns all the metadata objects related to customers, which has a total count of 256. Now under object info, we have another get request that gives same results as the catalog UI search. This is the data search or catalog search. I would like to point out that Q and FQ are common solar query parameters. Q is the main query parameter and FQ applies a filter query to the search results. We can modify these flags according to our query also REST APIs might also have additional filters not available in the catalog UI. I'm going to try, type in sales here. When I execute this query, I get an object count of 23. Let's try out the same in the catalog UI. When I execute this, you can see that I get 23 results, same as the one that I got in Swagger. 
Now let's try out Access Layer 2. I can type access slash to slash catalog slash data slash slash objects to get all the objects from the catalog. Here are all the objects. We can use attribute IDs and values to build queries on top of this. We have multiple attribute IDs like co.resource type, co.last modified, co.description, co.class type, co.resource name, etc. Now let's try out Q is equal to co.resource type oracle. This will show all the metadata related to the oracle resource type. Now let's do the same in Swagger. Object info. Execute. And it gives the same total count for the metadata 77 as seen here. We could also have done Q is equal to Oracle, but that would have been a very general search and might not be useful. Thus, we do semantic search on attribute IDs to get better results. Now, let's try one more. So, here we'll try this co.resource type Oracle and co.class type com.infa.ldm.relational.schema. This returns all the relational schemas schemas in the oracle resource we could also give in more parameters such as we could replace this with column to get all the columns or we could give in a resource name to get a particular resource now let's use swagger to get create test connection execute and monitor a resource now in the swagger ui go to internal spec Go to resource controller. This has all the different REST API calls such as get all resources, create resource, get resource by parent, get resource update resource, etc. We are going to get a resource by its resource name. Now let's get the name of a resource from the UI. So I'm going to do a get request for this Postgres resource. Try it out. Now, since this is a required field, I will not be able to execute this REST API call until I populate this field. So I'm giving this as the search parameter for the resource name. When I execute this, you can see that under resource identifier, you have the resource name Postgres underscore resource. So this got the specified resource for you. It has the resource type ID JDBC, resource type name JDBC, and under scanner configurations, you can see all the configurations of the scanner. So this particular resource uses the JDBC scanner, and the JDBC scanner has been enabled true. The configuration options has all the option IDs and the various option values that we have passed as parameters for these option ID fields. For instance, for driver class, we have org.postgresql.driver. For user, we've given the username, the memory value, and so on. When we scroll down, you also see that under scanner, you have the composite domain scanner configured. This has been enabled true, and all composite data domains have been selected for composite data domain discovery. The profile scanner has also been configured. This has all the creation details. Now, when you see, you'll realize that all of these are the same things that are, we have configured in the catalog UI, such as driver class org.postgresql.driver, URL, user, and so on. So basically, you just pass these parameters into the fields in the Swagger UI. Now, I performed a GET request on the Postgres resource. I have copied this whole thing into my notepad 
to give you an overview of how to post a resource or create a resource. I've copied all of it except the profile scanner configurations because I don't want to configure them just yet. Now let's do a create resource. For create resource, I can go here. This is a post request for the catalog. Now this is required for creating a resource. These are rest resource configurations. Now you can manually pass parameters here. You can give a resource name such as Postgres REST API resource. You can give the resource type ID. It can be JDBC scanner or if you're using a PostgreSQL, you can type a PostgreSQL scanner, a SQL server scanner, a Oracle scanner and so on. You can give the type of scanner you want to implement. Now under configuration option, you can pass all the option IDs such as driver class, username, schema and so on. You should enable the scanner true for it to be enabled. You can also provide different scanners such as composite, uh, composite scanner and then profile scanner and so on. Now I'm going to try it out. I could pass the parameters here, but I want to enable composite domain discovery as well. So I'm going to copy this that I got from my get resource and that paste it into my put. This is the best practice as you can just modify the parameters according to what you want. So as you can see, these have the same fields that we saw before and a few more. So I've given the resource name as Postgres REST API resource, resource type ID as JDBC. I've given a JDBC scanner as the scanner ID, provider type core, and then I've given the driver class name, the URL, the user, the import stored procedure, memory options, and so on. And I've also configured the composite domain scanner and enabled it true. Now let's execute this resource. I'll also provide a copy of this with this KB. Now let's see if this resource has been created. Go to library, refresh this. You can see that the Postgres REST API resource has been configured. You can see that composite data domain has been enabled. These are all the settings that we configured. Now, now I could either test the connection from the catalog UI or I can go to Swagger, copy my create request. and use it here to test my connection. This is also present under the resource controller heading. I've given the scanner ID as JDBC scanner and I'll run execute now. As you can see that this res uh, results in a response body true, that means that the test connection is valid. Now, Let's go to resource execution. Go to default, resource execution. This uh, helps you do a manual load of the resource. So to try it out, you just need to give the name of the resource. So our resource name is Postgres underscore REST API underscore resource. Just going to pass this parameter here in the resource name. Execute. So this resource has been submitted for execution. As you can see. Let's go here. Monitoring. You can see that the metadata load and the composite domain inference has been queued. Let's go to the log location and get the job ID.
Okay, since the job was in queued state, I didn't have a job ID, but if it's in the running state, we can give the job ID here and then monitor the resource job. Furthermore, there is a monitoring info header, which has all these other monitor job calls. Uh, so the metadata load and composite domain inference have now completed. Now let's get back to our slides. So this is it folks. We would love to hear from you. You can reach out to us at the below links if you have any questions, queries or feedback. Um, and that's it. Thank you so much for watching the video.